you loop. Mm -hmm. One for the crib and then one for the finishing wire. Okay. And so we've done, you've been, have you been to the tutorials on the design of these things? I came to the tutorial, yeah. Um, one, one of the one, them. The one that you organized, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was there, but um, it's funny with these things, you forget so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so really this one's all about, um, did you want me to look at some you've done already? or? Um, well, I did. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't practiced it recently. I was just planning to prepare early for the exams, right. the wire bending exam that we've got yeah. in um, in June. So I thought if I um, start now. I think you must have a mock at some stage, haven't you? We had the mock last year. So is that? No, that's. I don't know if that counts. You've got a mock about three, two or three months before. I would have thought. Okay. Is there not one penciled in for? Um, not in the. You can have the first thing here is the multi loop, mm -hmm. and you can that thing is supposed to fit mm. onto the plate, onto the model. onto the, for this model here. And so, really, the important parts about this mm -hmm. are to make it so that the um, you see these little bits here mm -hmm. that go in. Yeah. See how they got to to a lot to go in to actually touch the surface of the T. This yeah. one here doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I can see Can that. you see that that won't mm -hmm. go in? So that one doesn't work. The spaces um, have got to so be. So you've got to make, yeah. You, just the most right. important thing is to get the spacing of the loops. Whether you you don't really need this one in the middle here because these teeth aren't that that crooked. Mm -hmm. So you have to get the spacing right. You have to get the arch form right so that it more or less fits this model. Mm -hmm. And then it has to be nice and flat when you lay it down on mm -hmm. the table. Mm -hmm. And then it has to have all these features on it. So if you have a look here, the way it's marked is we largely look at how well formed all these right angle bends are and how nicely formed all these U loops are. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of the marks comes in. And you find that most people make um, the U loops, uh, n nothing touches the table. Because obviously, if you want to get the teeth all lined up nicely, then all these bits of wire here mm -hmm. that actually sit on the table need to mm -hmm. be in the same plane and flat on the table. I see. Okay. So that's where all all these marks come from. Then you've got an overall mark for arch form, which is this arch form. Mm -hmm. So I mean, a lot of people are tempted to bend these up to the arch form of a symmetry chart. Okay. That, that's um, not the right thing to do. That's not really what we're looking mm. for. We're looking for you to be able to control the wire to make the patient's arch form because it's that's we tend to use. I know this is an upper arch, but we tend to use patient arch form mm. rather than you know wanting to change any of the dimensions. And how is that done? Is that by um, putting a paper underneath it and then tracing the outline of the teeth, or you could do, or you just sorry um, yeah. photocopying we the. One way of doing it is photocopying, but I mean, largely on a clinical day-to-day -day clinical basis, you just hold this up against the. I mean, I don't know what you think about that that arch form, but to me, it looks fairly broad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not really the the patient's original arch form. It wouldn't. This is very U-shaped, mm -hmm. and this is rather V-shaped. Okay. So ideally, you maintain into canine width and into molar width. Okay. And you can round out in the premolar region if you like to do that sort of thing, but. Normally we would look at, at those uh, dimensions, into mm. canine intermolar width for <coughs> arch form. And d does the arch wire need to be just touching the outside of the teeth when it's in the yeah, right shape? Yeah, I mean that's usually if you make it to, to just touching like that, mm -hmm. yeah. then that's about right. I mean if you want to be really difficult about the whole thing and make it just stand away the thickness of the base of the bracket <laughs> tiny tiny bit <laughs> then you can you know you can make it away from the arch form by a millimeter but you know on a clinical day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. if it just touches it then that's about and it right does it matter that it touches the canine for example then well the problem is when you've got crooked teeth you have to imagine what the arch form is going to look like mm -hmm. once these teeth are straightened, straightened up, up. Yeah. and so your canine's obviously going to slip back into the four position okay and then these are going to drop back so if you wanted to use a different one then you could probably just imagine them retracted 
and I think that's how this one's been made. You see, this is quite a good arch form. Once, the, mm. once you've imagined that these have been retracted into that arch form, and that's mm. gone into where the the four is. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So that that's a, I think that's quite a good arch form for this one. Mm. It, it, it's a bit expanded. Mm. Um, but otherwise, it's really. But good. otherwise, it's it's pretty good. Why is, the loop, you, why is the loop in the middle a bit shorter than the rest? Well, normally you have to consider that there's a frenulum up here. And if you had a long one, then it might impinge on the soft tissue. And so if you're forced to put one in the midline, they were often made shorter, hmm. probably shorter than this. Or you offset them at 45 degrees. If you hmm. really need one, then you can if you just make it like that and keep it out of the way. I see, okay. I think we had this in the, the yeah. test actually, yeah. I mean, this is the whole thing about th this one here, is, is trying to design the loops that you need for the teeth that you've been given. Mm -hmm. And so, obviously, this one here's got a lot of U-loops in it, mm -hmm. because the diagnosis, if you like, is labiolingual displacement. Yep. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But obviously you can get sets of teeth where there's a significant vertical displacement. Sure. And if you had a vertically displaced tooth, then your loops um, would have to be um, these uh, boot loops. So if one of the canines happened to be vertically displaced a long way, say this one was up here, mm -hmm. say that the uh, this FA point was up here somewhere, sure. then there's no way that you could bend that wire into all these teeth unless you had a vertical flexibility from these boot loops. Okay. And so it's a question of designing the right wire. Some people go completely mad and they put a loop between every tooth and mm -hmm. they seem to get far too many loops. A normal one has four. And like I say, you probably don't need one. I know that you see, you've got to think that mm. the incised edges are quite far away mm. there, maybe a millimeter. But in fact, where the bracket is, they're much closer together. Okay. Because they're sort of, they're like a bit like this, aren't they? Yeah. And so at this point, they're more or less the same level, so you probably don't need a loop in the middle. Mm. So as far as design goes, it's the right loops, and they have to be in the right place, which is roughly the contact point, but if you need to get that bit of wire to slip in between the teeth, mm. then you want to have that, that has to be narrow enough to actually go in there and to engage again. into this bracket. So mm -hmm. that's the trick there. And how, so, how can you make sure it goes into the gap? Is it by measuring the distance? Well, in between it's the just teeth? when you you just have to do it by by eye, and you just have to make sure that when you push on this bit, it goes, it into goes in between the mm. the teeth, so that you could engage it in the bracket. If it's too wide, like this one, mm. then you won't get anywhere nearer the bracket, and mm -hmm. so you won't get any alignment of this tooth, however mm. hard you tie this in, it won't actually do anything. Sure. So, so it's more by eye rather than measuring space. Yes, I'm afraid it is, that's, that one is a bit tricky, isn't it? Mm. I mean, they can look very narrow, but you've mm. got a reasonable amount of space in there, and that's definitely wider than the lateral bracket, so you'll be able mm. to get it into the lateral bracket and have the wire going down, down okay. each side. When I look at this one from the above, it has got um, like the loops are not in the same angulation, some yes, of them are well that's, slanting forward, some of them are slanting... That's all part of the thing, isn't it? Normally mm -hmm. for a wire exercise, I suggest you make them at stand right angles. Right yes, yeah, so yeah. they can stand out straight. On a clinical basis, you'd probably have them all tilted in a little bit, because for most people, mm -hmm. this bit slopes in. Mm -hmm. So it catches and, the lip. If and so if you have them very vertical, they, they stick out. What you don't want is to have them flared out, because mm -hmm. obviously they really would dig in. Although you know, a lot of teeth are more vertical than these anyway, so that would work quite well. Um, so once you've got arch form right, you then have to get symmetry right. Now, symmetry, you normally use a symmetry chart, although, you know, if you like to, you can just hold it up and just look at it. And the human eye is usually quite good at symmetry, but unfortunately, being a chap, you're not going to be as good at this <laughs> as being a girl, because you're supposed to have a better eye for symmetry. And so sometimes you have to rely on uh, using a chart. And if I don't, I don't have a symmetry chart, you've got, presumably you've got a symmetry chart. Is that the same as the Euro arch form? Well, you could use any art, any symmetry. The Euro arch form is a bit 
different because it's often used to to, to check symmetry, it, you could use any one of these. You don't have to use the right, you know, the correct one. Mm. All you've got to do is to get the front bit, the front little bit, okay, directly over the line, and then you look at how the rest of it follows the shape of the arch. Yes, the shape of the arch. So let's choose one that doesn't fit very well. For instance, this one here. It should be the same distance from both sides. But you sides. can see, that's right, that mm. these are sort of, if they're two squares away there and two squares away there and one square away here and one mm. square away there, then it's going to be uh, symmetrical. Sure. Yes, if you can't do it by eye, use a symmetry chart. Okay. And then the last bit here is uh, flatness. And, and that's the bit that was very important, is to have all the bits of wire that are going to sit in the brackets. Mm -hmm are the bits that are going to be flat on the table because ultimately if you can't get that flat then it's unlikely that you would get the next wire size in. Mm -hmm. I know we don't use stainless steel anymore but if you imagine the next wire after this would be perhaps on a 1.8 stainless, stainless steel, steel then mm -hmm. it really needs everything needs to be pretty well aligned before you could get the next arch wire in. Uh, arch wire in. Sense, so yeah. Now I think we did ch change slightly the weightings of the marks um, a little bit. And in fact, that might be the changed one, so that there was a bit more mark on Flatness. this you no know, loop length and position. So having the uh, the loops in the right place to make it a functional wire, because mm. essentially this one, as beautiful as it may be, mm. is useless. Mm -hmm. It's clinically useless mm -hmm. because that bit of wire won't fit in in there. So mm -hmm. you might as well throw it away and start again. Sure, yeah. Although it's beautifully flat, it's very nicely symmetrical, it's got a reasonable arch form, um, it's clinically useless. So there's quite a bit of waiting mm -hmm. on the score there. Now you have to get 50% to pass, so you need a score of 13 here mm -hmm. to pass this one. And this will be marked by two people, and then we'll take the average and round up. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> no, it makes sense, yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and I've got a puzzled look on my face, but it, it makes sense. It needs to be a thing of beauty. Well, I think, I mean, part of the game is understanding mm -hmm. how this is going to be marked and what it's, cause what it's looking for, because I don't know, if you take a, a pawn card, we can have a go at one of those, mm -hmm. and then we can, or we can have a look at how to start making one of those. Hmm. The second wire, the finishing wire, is um, 1925 steel and is made for another study model. Do we get given these study models? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and they all come, well they should be labelled. And what you have to mm. do is to follow these requirements here. So oh. this needs, and you'll have usually have two first order bends mm. so there's one that's a frank first order bend and there's usually one that is a a vertical um, extrusion or intrusion bend Sorry. now to me these are sort of this is a bracket positioning error one mm. but these are generally um, first orders then you'll have one second order mm -hmm. and one third order bend sure. so you'll have a bit of everything and you put it all in the same wire I know mm. that's a bit tricky mm -hmm. Now, you'll be marked on the first order bends actually being a first order bend. <laughs> so it has to be the correct bend. Now, that's yeah. you, th you may laugh, but mm. usually what happens is somebody will turn the wire upside down part way through it, and instead of this being an extrusion bend on this one, it lands up as an intrusion bend on this one. <laughs> and that's because somewhere along the line they've turned right the wire in. upside down. And 